gets me through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Welcome to the podcast. And you know, there's age gaps, then there's age gaps. Yeah, we spoke about a man who's 60, who's dating a woman who's 24, which is younger than his daughters. You can imagine what sort of feedback he got from his daughters. So we just opened up the lines and got some outrageous situations right here in Adelaide of people with these giant age gaps in their dating. And we got a phone call that has to be heard to be believed because it was basically a son who was completely salty at his mother because she married someone in their 90s. Yeah, young gentleman by the name of King who's got a lot on his chest. <laughs> he had a bit to say, didn't he? Good on him, though. This is a good, safe place to vent. Yeah, we've always said that Nova 919 is a place for really... It's really therapeutic. It is, isn't yeah. it? Cathartic, even. Let's right now talk about dating age gaps. We should. Oh, my gosh. There's an outrageous article that's come out. Mm -hmm. Um, A six-year-old man's daughters, who were both in their 30s, begged the father not to match with a woman on a dating website who was younger than them on a dating app. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. So, Semi, the person is 24. She met her partner, Claudio. <laughs> Claudio. <laughs> Claudio. 04 919 Is your name Claudio? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? No. She met Claudio, who's 60, when she was 18, thanks to this dating site, Seeking Arrangement, which is basically like... Where, Sugar daddy. Yeah. Young yeah. girls go to find a sugar daddy. Right? Yeah. So, you just wonder what their intentions are. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So Claudio recalled his daughters who were 33 and 34 begged him not to date a woman younger than him, but he couldn't help himself when he stumbled across Semi on the matchmaking app. Fortunately, after meeting Semi, Claudio's daughters grew to accept the relationship and even let their kids call her grandma. Oh, oh that's nice. How old is she, 24? She's 24. He's 60. Yeah, right. Oh, boy. Oh, let's do some little mess on that. 36 years. Th- 36 years is quite the age gap. Isn't it? But what about the rumours, which have since been dispelled, but then you sit there and you go, well, was there something going on? Johnny Depp and Jenna Ortega. Mm. He's 60. She's 20. Mm-hmm. That's a 40-year difference. Yeah, but haven't they both denied it? Yeah, but what about the whole... Do you know better? When there, where there's smoke, <laughs> there's fire type thing. Where do these rumours start? Uh, do do you, know, you know what I'm saying? Did you know rumors? what Hazy does during the day? He's the head of TMZ. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. That's so your he's second got all job. the goss. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually an apprentice at uh, the Daily Mail. Yeah, right. Yes. So I just come up with all this sort of crap. And I was in an age gap relationship. Were you? What? Yeah. There's how long? 18 years between us. Wow. So I know. What? What, how old was he? He was my boss's best friend. And how old was he? He was 40 at the time and I was 22. (sighs) Okay, so this is interesting to me. So, like, I feel like men who like youth, that's fine, you know, obviously. You're in your best nick when you're in your 20s. But also, what do you talk about? Like, what did you talk about with a 40-year-old man? Um, We got drunk a lot and fought a lot, so... Oh, cool. (laughs) That sounds perfectly functional. And I bet what what were you drinking? Probably bloody cruises and uh, skittle bombs. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I was, and looking back now as a 33-year-old, I'm like, oh, I was way too young. Yeah. And I was a terror back then. I was living my best life. Yeah, Working right. in hospitality and just going to town and doing silly things. So I was just way too young and not mature enough to be with someone older like that. Did you, did you love him? Um, it was on and off for like a good five years. So oh. yeah, eventually, yes, I did, but I don't think I was like properly in love with him. Yeah, right. But I loved the, you know, having someone that you could call up for anything like, I need this, I need that. Yeah. <gasps> he was oh. a sugar daddy. He wasn't a sugar daddy, but if I need, you know, whatever I needed, he, not as in like materialistic stuff. Well, that's, that's Well, that's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> whatever I needed, you know. No, like if, if like the the drain was blocked at home or, you know, whatever, like <laughs> I just call it plumber. <laughs> what do we call, call No, it's stuff that. Or? I was 22, I had no money. What's going on? Here? I was 33, I still don't have any money, but anyway. <laughs> I'm a little confused because the rule that we got told as well was um, it's half your age plus 7. That's the youngest you can go. Half your age plus seven. So I'm 38. That would mean the youngest that I could possibly go is 26. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, that and sounds even, feasible for you, though. And even that seems like just a different generation, though. Yeah, I don't really want to do the maths on this one. I might opt out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you anyway. Next, expose some Next. numbers. <laughs> numbers can be so cruel. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to Nathan. Hey, Nath. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Excellent. What's the situation, Nath? Uh, one of me, mate. He's 36. He's got the maturity of a 17-year-old. Yeah. But anyway, he's just got his 19-year-old, just, just had a kid, actually, with his 19-year-old missus. Wow. 
That's good. Yes, mate. Well, that's as in terms of us. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> that's what, for a big uh, age gap. So, Nate, how 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 she received amongst all of you guys, the mates? Oh, she's all right. Well, I'm only uh, I'm only twenty one, so she's more my okay, age than his. Yeah. But <laughs> no, she's a. Uh, oh, he's not real mature. He's pretty dumb for a thirty six year old. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how you refer to him as a 17-year-old, so in terms of mental maturity, she's actually older than yes. him. <laughs> oh, oh, she's, yeah, she's twice as mature as him. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. That's good. Okay. Big, you know, big you know shout-out to Nate's mate, too, this morning. Do you know what we have learned across the journey? Is it love's love? Love's love. Do you know? Yeah. Love doesn't have the rules. No. It has no bounds. Uh, it just turns up. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. How is everyone? We're very well, thank you. What's the age gap that we speak of? So my mother is 58 and her husband is uh, probably touching on 90 now. Wow. <laughs> um, I normally think I normally think there's a motive behind uh, the age gap. Now, probably not with everyone, but unfortunately my mother's looking at his pocket. Oh. So we, we don't, I don't talk to my mother, but uh, she's made it quite known that uh, when he moves on, that she's going to be a rich person. So yeah. So, so when do it's they quite quite nasty? When do they get together? How long has the relationship been going oh, on for? They've been they've been married for about uh, three years. Prior to that, probably been together for the three again. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, is there love yeah. there, or you just think it's? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't think so. No, I think they're just uh, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There you go. Well, um, I'd- I don't want to break it to you, but joke's on her. I heard he's going to live till 130. <laughs> well, uh, well, I hope he does, and his kids actually say he's an inheritance. That's my, my opinion. Yeah. So, okay, so just, just to really take a deep dive into this, Kim, uh, are the, have you had this conversation with the kids as well? Is it like an open discussion? Uh, I've had the, the uh, open discussion with the brothers and family about it, and they all feel the same way, that's for sure. Yeah, wow. God, all right. Okay. Um, if you're thinking of asking us over for Christmas at your house, probably don't because <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to no. be intense. Oh, she wouldn't be invited anyway. Yeah, right. I'm picking yeah. up that vibe, Unfortunately. Kim. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. No. Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Oh, um, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a solid age gap. Ooh, that's, uh, yeah, that's tense. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm two years older than Car as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She ain't hung, hanging around for my money. No. <laughs> <laughs> no money there. No. Well, hey, you could go to the gym or do the shopping or go to work. But what if you went in a beachier direction? You're only a what if away from a holiday with the What If app. Book accommodation, flights, packages and more. What if it's Aussie for travel? Now that's a joke. That was a joke. That's a joke. A joke. <laughs> that's a terrible joke. Oh. Best way to start a Monday. We always say that. Welcome to the studio, News Read Abby. Good morning. Yeah. You're a little bit poorly today, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's just a tad. It's, it sounds like you've been smoking 600 cigarettes every day for your entire life. I have. Um, that's my secret, and now it's out, <laughs> and <laughs> everyone knows. Yeah, right. Okay, Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have some sort of chest infection, so please excuse me if I die in the corner. Um, just keep going. Okay. All, all right. right, sure. We'll just soldier on. I yeah. mean, we've always said that the joke off never stops. It doesn't for stop. For anyone, it even a dead news <laughs> Even when I went to Bali, it still, you know, still got there. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. let's do it. All, um, right. all right, I'll kick things off if you don't mind. I'll yeah. go on there. I'll just try it. and set the tone. All right. <laughs> uh, and given it was Father's Day yesterday, and off the back of uh, all the dad jokes that we pulled out last week. Yes. Oh, how good's a dad joke? All right. We'll be the judge of that. Okay. <laughs> Look, a bear... A big bear, a grizzly bear, walks into a bar and says, give me a whiskey and cola. Why the big paws? Asked the bartender. The bear shrugged and he said, I'm not sure. I was just born with them. <laughs> oh, the <big> paws. <laughs> oh, it's just a little play on words. Oh, <laughs> just to say, I got, got Abby uh, coughing. I can't that's laugh good. because I'm going to cough. That, that's not the joke. That's oh. the 17,000 Winnie Blues she's had yeah. Yeah. in the lead up to today. Just lay off the durries. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, do you want me to go now? Yes, yep. please. All right, ready? Yeah. The teacher says, kids, what does the chicken give you? And the student says, meat. And the teacher says, very good. Now, what does the pig give you? And the student says, bacon. And the teacher goes, great. And what does the fat cow give you? And the student goes, homework. Oh, <laughs> I get it. 
<laughs> that um, did not go where I think it was going to no. go. There's, there's like cross reference in terms of <laughs> yeah. is it a cow, cow or is it the teacher? So she thinks her teacher is a cow. Anyway. Uh, that's right, good. Okay. That's good. Okay, bring that's us good. home. I'll tell okay. you what, we're lukewarm this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish off with a bang. Here we go. Um, okay, so guys, over the weekend I went to a Christmas tree farm because I was really keen to get a Christmas tree. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, I know it's early, but, you know, I want to be prepared. Yeah. yeah. And the guy says to me, are you going to be putting this up yourself? <laughs> and shocked, I replied, no, it's going up in the living room, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I actually oh. genuinely are you don't putting get it up it. yourself? No, you? it's going in the living room. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm still assembling yeah. a Christmas tree. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh my God, I'm getting now. fired. Is yeah. our boss in yet? Yeah. It's being assembled. It's, by, it's got a fake stalk. Oh, my very goodness. Yeah. That's so this, good. That's this good. is the face of someone going, oh, my God, did she just do that? <laughs> The boss isn't here, that, so it's yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, I think you, I've just spotted him outside. Yeah, no, so. it's all right. It can't, anything cannot be as bad as the sill joke. Like, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that was but true. But I love that she said the benchmark so dirty that now she compares everything <laughs> yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah. Like, it's Isn't hard it to shock you now. Sill? Yeah. No, it's not. That's so not. Right. Right. <laughs> It's a great man. The Weekend Sports Wrap with Tom Rand. Sexy. <laughs> What a sexy man he is. Yeah. Usually we have him in studio, but he's such a man about town. We've got to hook up via the cell. Good morning, Rennie. Uh, morning, Hazy. Hello, Joe. Yes, I'm so sorry. Just been down at the Royal Show, having a ball down there with all the, the cows and all the, the stores, getting an early chance to get some show bags before just, everyone else gets in there. You just, you just say you're hanging out with a bunch of cows. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> exactly. how dare you refer to the good folks of 5AA like that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, Tommy, we were just speaking about odd couplings. I mean, you and Andrew Hayes, no one saw that coming, and yet here we are. Exactly right. Like, we, you know, we just go like peas in a pod, you know, mm. like twins, Danny DeVito and um, Arnold. <laughs> I mean, we, we make it work. We, we're just a beautiful couple together. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Uh, Rennie, let's talk about some sports. Uh, the AFLW showdown on the weekend. Beautiful way to kick off round one. Um, good victory by the Crows, but what we can say as well is that Port is much improved. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they um, they pushed them harder. Ratio Fantasia, I thought, was really good on the weekend. Um, booted four goals, Hazy, so hasn't done his AFL hopes any harm whatsoever. Um, so a great effort there from Ratio Fantasia, but disappointing that they couldn't get it done in the end, unfortunately, um, the Maggies. But for the Crows, gee, what a win, Hazy. You know, yeah. could we see the first ever premiership coming from either the Crows or Port Adelaide? They're one win away now from a grand final, so a massive result for them yesterday against the Double Blues. Yeah, I've got to be honest with you, Rennie. It seem a little bit strange to the Crows win a sample flag, but if they're good enough yeah. uh, and they want it, it's right up there for the taking. The other one as well, Scott Lysett, uh, taken off in the second half. Would you almost book him in for Brisbane, purely based on the first half as well? He was outstanding. I thought really good. You know, so important that he's there. I reckon they need him. Look, Hayes has done a good job in the ruck, I reckon, for... Um, the power when he's been called on Hazy, but I think Lysa just gives them that experience. As you know, that big body around the contest, he's so important for them. So I reckon they need Lysa for that trip to Brisbane. So hopefully he'll be okay to go. And um, I think he just has to play that match for for the power um, up against Brisbane on Saturday night. What a game that's going to be, Hazy. I mean, just for their season, it, it's so important they can get that win that first week. Week off then, home prelim final. It's such a massive advantage as opposed to having to then play the second week and then play an away prelim final. Now, Tommy, um, Hazy told me to ask you about the cricket, to which I went, is there cricket on? Yeah. So uh, fill in the blanks there, please. Yeah, we, we, we love we love the T20s, um, Tommy, when Australia win. Well, it's, and when South Aussies do well. Travi Head, 91 off 48 balls, his best ever score um, in a t <laughs> So an amazing result there for him. 91 off 48 balls, six sixes in there as well. So the great man, Travi Head, doing absolutely brilliantly. And, and we love a winner. So we we'll, we'll, we'll just get behind Travi when he's doing that kind of thing. Ready? Was that was that you honking someone or someone honking you? No, I was honking someone because there was a turn left, there was an arrow, and he, he had the blink on and he wasn't turning. And I said, mate, time to turn. He's been a rope. It's, it's ready. <laughs> He's bustling his way through on a Monday morning in Adelaide. It's very aggressive from you, Tom. Oh, just doing what you... I try to, you know, because you don't want to make it too long a bit because then it just 
rude. Yeah. <laughs> just a, just a polite little... It's a polite little quick Did sticks. Did I push it too long? No, 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 it's no, fine. It was okay. It was nice. It was cute. <laughs> we, we were talking about this the other day, you and I, Hazy, because, um, you know, when you miss the light and your head's down, for whatever reason, you're not concentrating, yeah. and then you get the light and the person behind you doesn't. Yeah. Oh, that's mortifying, isn't it? <laughs> then you give a courtesy <laughs> wave, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, I'm but sorry. I'm, I need to get out of here. It's uh, like, I can feel their anguish. <laughs> hey, um, Rennie, before I let you go, you know exactly what time it is. It's Monday morning. We need a joke from you, please. Well, the joke is, how do you make... A Kleenex dance. How do you make a Kleenex as in the tissue dance? Yeah. Yeah. Put a boogie in it. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> oh, my God. If you see Tom Wren on the road and you just heard that joke, please beep him. That was <laughs> yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Give him some. Hey, Rennie, thanks for your time this morning, mate. So have fun at the show and we'll catch you again next week. Can't wait. Thanks, guys. Sorry about not being in there. No, that's fine, mate. All, All good, good, Tommy. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. This is huge. I just got valuable info. This is so juicy. Jody's Juice. Well, this really is juicy, this story. So Naomi Watts and Billy Crudup are in their honeymoon phase and she's dished on their pretty great mummy-daddy time. What do you mean? At the moment. You know. What do you mean? What parents like to get up to every now and then. What do they like to do? Watch a show together. When the, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, she said, I personally think it becomes more pleasurable when you take out the fear of making babies. Really, Naomi? Um, she said, what is that expression? Close for business, open for pleasure. Well, she's what? really overshared, Naomi, hasn't she? Hasn't she? I think that's called contraception. Yeah. Um, anyway, Billy's from Morning Wars. He stars as one of the producers. Oh, the show. okay. And you haven't seen it. Start watching it, please. No, I haven't seen it yet. Well, I want to have something in common with you. And yeah. I think Morning Wars is it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, that story. Juicy. Wasn't it? Juicy. Didn't see that coming, did you? No, not at all. What about this? Diplo and Chris Rock barely made it out of Burning Man. So, um, if you're not across this, monsoon thunderstorms left thousands of festival attendees stranded in Nevada's Black Rock Desert. Um, so, the DJ was determined to show up to his show that night in Washington. And he said a fan offered Chris Rock and I out of Burning Man, a lift out of Burning Man in the back of a pickup. There yeah. we go. Very good stuff as well. And the audio of Chris Rock probably thinking what everyone's thinking in a situation like that. Yep. I can get a cold brew right now. I can get a cold brew I can get right a now. Cold brew right cold now. Cold beer. So apparently they just walk down the road, like just trying to, with their thumbs out, trying yeah. to hitchhike. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just picking up Chris Rock, that'd be pretty cool. Imagine that would be an entertaining car ride, wouldn't it? Yeah, Juicy. Juice. And the AFL is pleased to announce international rock and roll juggernaut KISS will perform during the pre-game entertainment at the 2023 Toyota AFL Grand Final. Yes. You just want to ask the question, though, can the boys still get it done? I think so. Okay. Yeah. They can still rock and roll all night and party every day, whatever it is. Well, I think so. With no issues whatsoever. Yeah. So they're doing the pre-game. Yeah. Um, Half time is yet to be confirmed. And what are we, like, are we about seven, eight weeks away from the... Or even less than that. Well, yeah, less than that. Yeah, right. Yeah, only a few weeks away. You'd think the uh, uh, oh. artists and all the acts would absolutely be prepared. Yeah. Well, can I just throw it out there? Say this each and every year. Why do we need to sort, search abroad for these artists? And maybe it's an artist like Kiss who, let's be honest, big act but past its prime. Oh. Can't we just go, can't we just keep it local? Well, have you heard about the great crusade? Just get Mark Seymour up there. Belting out the Holy Grail acoustically if you need to. Yeah. Well, Crowded House um, were supposed to perform at halftime, but apparently they pulled out because there was a dispute over where the stage was going to be on the... Ground. Yeah, I don't oh. know. Anyway. What do you mean? As in they weren't happy? Yeah. That's, that's, that's according to Eddie Maguire. from Crowded House. That's yeah. according to Eddie Maguire, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> right. No, Eddie's, Eddie's in the know for a lot of things. Well, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay. Mm. I'll All keep right. my thoughts on that to myself. There you go. That's. St- I'm done now. <laughs> okay, I'm done with good. it. All right. Father's Day rolls around each year. I uh, just sort of each year think, wow, I don't know if I deserve this. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, dead set. So you're the father of two little ones with another one due any tick of the clock. Yes, uh, inside the next month or so. So heavily pregnant wife. Heavily pregnant wife. How did you contribute yesterday to father? Uh, so what I... Ca- <laughs> <laughs> so Cara uh, ended up sort of buying herself a one or two presents, which is... <laughs> <laughs> always organised because whenever I buy presents, it's always the wrong one. Right. So she knows exactly what to get. And then I'll, I'll wrap them and we'll get the kids to make a card yep. and a few little other things. But I just sort of feel like, uh, as well, yesterday it was Cara's birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> so, 
Oh my so God. she had to share her birthday with Father's Day. So when you said you, she brought herself some presents, I was like, why did she buy herself presents for Father's Day? Yeah, right that now, probably doesn't make sense, does no. it? <laughs> it was her birthday as well. Right. But I got plenty of presents as well. And each year, because I work so much, yep. and Cara does such an unbelievable job, mm. it's quite ridiculous. Mm. Uh, I just sort of sit there and start thinking, oh, I feel guilty. I prefer if there was two Mother's Days yeah, instead of a Father's Day and a Mother's Day. Yeah, that's so true. But when you sat there feeling guilty, did you think I might get up and get on my feet and help her in the kitchen or something? I was working. Oh, you're at work. Yeah, God, that's you, why. You really do suck. It's almost like a distant, <laughs> a, I'm a distant father because I work so much and it was proven right in the uh, the letter, the card that I got from my beautiful little daughter, Lottie. Oh. So on the front of these uh, little cards, which I've made at EOC, it says, I love my daddy because. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And then clearly the teacher says, why? <laughs> Gets the reason out and writes it in there. Yeah. So we can only imagine that after <laughs> probably several minutes of negotiations where they've completely fallen flat and come up with nothing, they had to write exactly what she wanted to say, which was, I love mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I love my daddy because I love, I love my mummy. <laughs> so I can imagine the teacher sitting there going, no, 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 well, what about dad? Why do you love dad? And Lottie just going, no, I love mummy. I love mummy. So I'm happy to get love from my daughter based on my affiliation with uh, my wife it, and her beautiful mother. It's like she loves you vicariously <laughs> yeah. through your wife. Purely by association. That is quite frankly one of the saddest things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I'd more than happily take two Mother's Day over Father's Day and a Mother's Day. So, big shout out to all the dads out there. And you know exactly who you are. You know you probably don't deserve a Father's Day. <laughs> but you won't say no to the socks and jocks, will you? No, nah, but it's okay because Lottie loves your wife. <laughs> are you telling me you built a time machine? So instead of being upset that it's Monday, look at Monday as a bit of an opportunity just to really start your week right and set it up as a foundation mm. for the future. Just cram your brain full of knowledge. Yeah, I can hear people now going, shut up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's just fine. me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get through today, eh? Monday, it's the 4th of September. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Let's go back to 1981. Beyonce Knowles was born in Houston, Texas today. It's her 42nd birthday. Queen B. All hail. Go off Queen. Wasn't God in the best mood ever when yeah. he created Beyonce? I don't think God just created Beyonce and he went, I've done it. Mm. Oh my God. Oh. I did it. He quit after that. Yeah, he's I'm like, like, I'm done being God. I can't outdo myself. No. After that. Like, this is just elite what yeah. I've just done. That was 42 years ago. I oh, that. I know. He gave up after that. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a long 42 years without yeah. God. 1975, Mark Ronson was born in London, England. Today's his 48th birthday. So Mark Ronson, responsible for so so much good music, mm -hmm. but you probably don't know what he's doing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I had to name a Mark Ronson song, I probably couldn't. No, but uh, you definitely know them. Yeah. Mm. Are we playing songs to song, song, song right now? Because I can't name it. Yes. <laughs> We've got the artist, but we don't have the title. Yeah. yeah. That's how I roll. Tough. 2021, Cristiano Ronaldo breaks world record for goals scored in men's international football, hits his 110th and 111th goals for Portugal in 2-1 World Cup qualifying win over Republic of Ireland. Ronaldo hits it! Oh, what a strike! Ronaldo's man is a machine! Wait, is he older or younger than Beyonce? Because I thought God quit and then went and created Ronaldo. That is true. Mm. He made a quick little comeback. Did he? I reckon Ronaldo is at around about... 37 or 38, so yeah, he's younger than Beyonce. Oh, right, okay. So, mm. hang on, did God quit before or after? No, 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 he made a little comeback. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then what about Messi? Oh, oh no. my God. Wow. And what about Conor Rosie? Oh, oh no. no. What about Tom Wren? Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Number one song on September 4th in 2003 was Miss Independent by Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, you are Miss Independent. Yeah, you are. Go off, Queen. Don't need no help. No. Don't need no man. Don't need no man. Stinking man. <laughs> Let's talk gender reveals, more specifically when a parent's going to ease up on them, because this comes after a plane in Mexico, this is awful, flew over the couple, dropped the colour, which yeah. was pink, 
it's a girl, everyone celebrates, and then proceeds to crash. Yeah, it's not the ideal gender reveal. And can you remember, I've just been Googling, like, the worst gender reveals of all time. Can you remember when that couple um, let, off, let off the cannon thing and sparked a bushfire in California that burnt out over 7,000 hectares, hectares yeah. even? Begs the question, was it really worth it? No, no I don't think so. Probably not. I just saw um, one balloon one <laughs> where the balloon took off before they could pop, pop it and Dad starts running after it and then <laughs> did the face. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. It, sh- it should never get violent. No. There's nothing that can ever top a gender reveal when there's a car involved oh. and there's a burnout. Oh, my God. And the smoke will either be pink or blue. Yeah. Why? It's a boy. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. boy. Um, yeah, they're unbelievable, these things. But my favourite gender reveal of all time is the video that I just showed you of the guy who went to let off the confetti, confetti cannon and did it straight into his own groin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> ever had a confetti <laughs> cannon so, fire into your so own so groin, so, Andrew? Yes, it's a girl or a boy, <laughs> and that will be my last child. <laughs> Uh, oh dear, 13, 24, 10, please get involved in the gender reveals this morning. We'd love to hear if you've been to one. Brittany from Andrew's Farm, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good. What happened at the gender reveal? So I had everyone there. I was super excited, but I have really worked myself up that this was going to be a girl and it was going to pop and it was going to be pink and like I was just going to be super happy. Um, so we had everyone there and they're all waiting. They're all got their cameras out ready. Me and my partner popped it. Blue confetti went everywhere. I was absolutely in shock. I like walked inside. Everyone knew that I wanted it to be a girl and I cried for the rest of the afternoon oh, no. and everybody left from there. Oh, oh no. Times. Oh, no. <laughs> Brittany, in hindsight, do you think if you knew you were going to be disappointed at the gender that you probably shouldn't have done it publicly? Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I just love the situation. I wouldn't change it now. Yeah. But, oh, my God, I yeah, I reckon it was the rest of the afternoon and the whole next day. I was just distraught. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Brittany, I was going to ask you, um, do you, like, now that you look back at it, are you like, jeez, why did I bother? Why did I invite all my friends and family around and do that to myself? Pretty much, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd it like was, to. Yeah. It was nice, but it yeah it could have been better. But waste of time, really. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a truly horrible afternoon, actually, for any. Like, pretty you, much, yeah. yeah. I was a, like, why did I do this? <laughs> just a gorgeous moment. Uh, congratulations, Brittany. It's a boy, and in your reaction, Brittany. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I am out of here. Uh, a big, big shout-out to newsreader Abby this morning because she is just ever so slightly knocking on death's door. Oh, I think I died in you. the 8 o'clock news. Did you? Yeah. yeah. yeah but I came back to life quickly. There was a really long pause there and you're just lucky that we had to give away show tickets so we couldn't highlight it, you know? <laughs> no, you've been such a trooper today. Really appreciate you coming in. Oh, I just, let's hope tomorrow's a better day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought under such adversity you delivered... In the Monday morning joke off. Because I always deliver hazy. Oh, oh let's be no. honest. I just, I just smash you two these days. Oh, oh wow. wow. Even, shot thrown. It's like, is it confidence or arrogance? Yeah. Or, I, is or, it? or is it confidence or is it um, cough syrup? You will yeah. never know. Yeah, maybe it's a combination. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's recap. We'll leave you with the Monday morning joke off. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, keep it locked and over for your next batch of show tickets. See ya. Goodbye.